Song of the Water Boatman and Other Pond Poems. Written by Joyce Sidman and illustrated by Becky Prang. Listen for me. Listen for me on a spring night, on a wet night, on a rainy night. Listen for me on a still night, for in the night I sing. That is when my heart thaws, my skin thaws, my hunger thaws. That is when the world thaws and the air begins to ring. I creep up from the cold pond, the ice pond, the winter pond. I creep up from the chill pond to breathe the warming air. I cling to the green reeds, the damp reeds, the muddy reeds. I cling to the slim reeds. My brothers are everywhere. My throat swells with spring love, with rain love, with water love. My throat swells with peeper love. My song is high and sweet. Listen for me on a spring night, on a wet night, on a rainy night. Listen for me tonight, tonight, and I'll sing you to sleep. Spring peepers. The sound of spring peepers is one of the earliest signs of spring. These inch-long tree frogs can freeze almost completely in winter because of a special antifreeze in their cells. As soon as the ground thaws, they begin to come alive again, climbing up twigs and bushes with their sticky toes. Their nighttime song, a loud, steady trill, is actually a series of high-pitched peeps lasting only a third of a second from their balloon-like throat sacs. The peepers you hear are the males who are calling to attract a mate. Spring Splashdown Peck, peck, crackle, crackle, fluff, fluff, wiggle, wiggle, snooze, snooze, mommy calling. Peep, peep, scramble, scramble, hop, hop, teeter, teeter, peek, peek, water sparkling, deep breath, leaping, leaping, splash down, bobbing, bobbing, heads up, paddle, paddle, mom near, follow, follow. Wood duck. The mother wood duck's favorite place to nest is a tree cavity as high as 50 feet in the air. When her eggs hatch, she warms and dries the ducklings for a day or so. Then she flies down to the water and calls to them. They return her calls and move toward the nest hole. Although they cannot yet fly, they leap one by one from the nest without hesitation. Whether they land in the water or on the ground, they are almost always unharmed. The wood duck was once hunted nearly to extinction for its feathers. Strict hunting laws and the use of artificial nest sites have brought back the wood duck, but it remains a shy bird that prefers undisturbed ponds and wetlands. Diving Beetles Food Sharing Rules Any type of larva is mine, as well as all tadpoles, minnows, and newts. Sticklebacks, caddisflies, spiders, and small frogs of any kind, mine. Snails, eggs, and bugs, all mine. In short, if it moves, it is mine. If it's anywhere near me, it is mine. If I'm hungry, and I'm always hungry, it is mine, mine, mine. And if by chance I choose to crawl up yonder smartweed bask for a bit, open my armored wings and fly about my kingdom, within which everything is mine, do not forget what is mine. For if I return and you have taken it, you are mine. Predacious Diving Beetle Diving beetles are sometimes called water tigers because they are such fierce underwater hunters. Although they are only an inch and a half long, they eat almost anything that moves and will attack much larger creatures with their powerful chewing mouth parts. Expert swimmers, they kick through the water with large back legs and can carry bubbles of air to breathe underwater. Smooth, hard wing cases streamline their bodies and also protect their delicate wings. They fly mostly at night to scout out new sources of food. Fly, dragon, fly. Water nymph, you have climbed from the shallows to don your dragon colors. Perched on a reed stem, all night shedding skin, you dry your wings in the moonlight. Night melts into day, swift birds wait to snap you up. Fly, dragon, fly, fly. Green darner. The green darner is only one of the almost 5,000 species of dragonflies. Its huge eyes allow it to see in all directions, and its four wings move separately. All dragonflies are amazing flyers, able to zoom up to 35 miles per hour, stop short, hover, and even fly backward. They spend several months or years living underwater as nymphs, 
Then, one warm spring night, the nymphs crawl from the water, shed their skins for the last time, and become shining aerial wizards. In the depths of the summer pond. Here hang the algae, green and small, in the depths of the summer pond. Here floats the flea, waving antenna, that eats the algae, green and small, in the depths of the summer pond. Here nods the nymph with feathery gills that drinks the flea that eats the algae green and small in the depths of the summer pond. Here dives the bug, sleek and swift, that nabs the nymph that drinks the flea that eats the algae green and small in the depths of the summer pond. Here kicks the frog with golden eyes that gulps the bug that nabs the nymph that drinks the flea that eats the algae green and small in the depths of the summer pond. Here lurks the fish, wide of jaw, that swallows the frog that gulps the bug that nabs the nymph that drinks the flea that eats the algae green and small in the depths of the summer pond. And here hunts the heron, queen of the pond, that spears the fish that swallows the frog that gulps the bug that nabs the nymph that drinks the flea that eats the algae green and small in the depths of the summer pond. Food Chain Life in the pond begins with plants, which manufacture food from the sun. Plants become food for plant-eating, herbivorous animals, like the tiny water flea or the water boatman. These small animals and bugs are eaten by bigger bugs, which are eaten by meat-eating, carnivorous animals, like minnows and tadpoles. Bigger fish eat the smaller fish, and the heron, with its keen eyes and sharp beak, eats whatever it wants. A Small Green Riddle I float without air, I root without soil, eaten by all, named for one, the color of grass, water carpet. I grow daughters like ears, I am no bigger than a splatter of paint. Soon I will take over the pond. This is the smallest of the flowering plants. About the size of this O, it floats on top of pond water, letting its roots hang down to absorb the food it needs. It spreads very quickly by growing side shoots, ears, which break off and become new plants. In the warmest days of summer, it can completely cover a small pond, providing shelter for many insects and animals. It is a favorite food of almost every pond dweller, especially the duck. Can you guess what it is? Aquatic Fashion Smart young caddis worms select only the best to dress themselves. Strong, sticky silk pinpoint pebbles, snips of leaves, or the tiny whorled eyelets of snail shells, edged in sand. Who cares if each sleek suit measures less than an inch? First prize gets wings. Caddisfly. When caddisfly larvae, or caddis worms, hatch, most species immediately get to work building themselves a protective camouflaged case. They glue together whatever they find at the bottom of the pond, leaves, sand, pebbles, to form a long tube around their bodies. This tube has an opening for their head and upper legs so they can move about and eat. As they grow, the larvae build on to their tiny homes. When the time is right, they seal the end of their case and begin the two-week transformation into adult caddisflies with wings. Song of the Water Boatman and Back Swimmer's Refrain down through the jolly waters green, I stroke with legs both long and lean, like a streamlined Class A submarine on a sunny summer's morning. Yo ho ho, the pond winds blow, and upside down is the way to go. Of plunging deep, I have no fear. To breathe, I keep some bubbles near, trapped on my chest in a silver sphere on a sunny summer's morning. Yo ho ho, the pond winds blow, beneath my wings the air I stow. I like to eat the dark green goo that floats about like veggie stew, mixed for a water boatman true on a sunny summer's morning. Yo ho ho, the pond winds blow, I'd rather catch wee beasties, oh. Danger lurks in every spot, from beetles, turtles, and their lot. I hide down deep where the sun is not on a sunny summer's morning. Yo ho ho, the pond winds blow, I hang up top by the surface glow. I guess by now it's clear to see the boatman's life is the life for me. Among the weeds I'll always be on a sunny summer's morning. Yo ho ho, the pond winds blow. The back swimmer's life is the life I know. Water boatman, back swimmer. 
Common in most ponds, these two half-inch long water bugs look almost identical. Both have boat-shaped bodies and oar-like legs. But whereas the water boatman swims right side up, the back swimmer spends its life on its back. You can often see the back swimmer hanging belly side up just below the surface of the water. It is waiting for small insects to eat, while the water boatman eats mainly plant matter. Both water bugs carry bubbles of air with them to breathe, either on their bellies, primarily the water boatman, or under their wings, primarily the back swimmer. Travel time. In late summer, when the old hot sun drains the pond and every drop of water sizzles and bakes, the water bear stops her lumbering, folds her tiny claws against her chest, and shrinks, shrinks smaller than she already is. A speck, a grain, a microscopic tumbleweed, she waits for wind to take her somewhere cooler, wetter, more like spring. Water bear. The water bear's Latin name, tardigrada, means slow stepper. This tiny animal, less than a fortieth of an inch long, moves among moist mosses and lichens with a slow bear-like gait. When the mosses dry up in hot weather, water bears are marooned without the ability to move or eat. But instead of dying, they shrivel into barrel-shaped microscopic tons, which are easily blown about by the wind. In this state, they can live for months, years, even decades. When they tumble back into the water, they swell up again and resume their slow water bear lives. The water bear shown here is magnified many times in a drop of water, along with other microorganisms. The Seasons Campaign 1. Spring we burst forth, crisp green squads, bristling with spears. We encircle the pond. Two, summer. Brown velvet plumes bob jauntily. On command, our slim waving arrows rush toward the sun. Three, fall. All red-winged generals desert us. Courage clumps and fluffs like bursting pillows. Four, winter. Our feet are full of ice. Brown bones rattle in the wind. Sleeping, we dream of seed scouts sent on ahead. Cattails. Cattails are plants called emergents, for they grow half in and half out of the water. Their tall, spiky leaves spread around the edges of ponds and shelter many animals. Red-winged blackbirds nest in them, muskrats build mounds with their leaves, and ducks paddle among them, hidden from predators. The most distinctive part of the cattail is its brown flower, which looks like a sausage on a stick. Soft as a cat's tail, this flower becomes a fluffy mass of parachuting seeds spreading with the wind. When tiny cattail seeds fall on moist soil, they sprout and grow new cattails. Into the mud. Sun slants low, chill seeps into black water. No more days of bugs and basking. Last breath, last sight of light, and down I go into the mud. Every year, here, I sink and settle, shuddered like a shed. Inside, my eyes close, my heart slows to its winter rhythm. Goodbye, goodbye. Remember the warmth, remember the quickness, remember me, remember. Painted turtle. Like other reptiles, painted turtles are ectothermic or cold-blooded. This means they cannot make their own heat as we do, they depend on the surrounding temperature to warm their bodies. In the fall, when the weather gets cool, there is no longer enough sunlight for them to remain active. Along with many other creatures, they burrow into the pond's muddy bottom to hibernate. Their heartbeat slows and their breathing stops. Though ice may form above them, they are protected from freezing by a layer of mud. <laughs>